All right, rational functions, test review, let's go. So simplifying the rational expression if possible. All right, so factor the top, factor the bottom. That's basically what this is saying. So what two numbers multiply to make 12 that add up to seven? Three and four. So they're both positive. So plus three, plus four. Denominator, two numbers that multiply to make 12 that add up to negative seven. So negative three, negative four. All right, nothing can cancel. So that's pretty much it. <clears throat> that's as simple as it will get. Number two, I'm gonna factor something out of the top. So this will be, X is common to both X squared and five X. So what's left behind? X plus five. Denominator, two numbers that multiply to five that add up to six. Five and one. So plus five plus one. And then we see that there's an X plus five in the top, X plus five in the bottom. So that's gonna cancel. And we're gonna get X over the leftovers, X plus one. All right, and remember the X's cannot cancel because of the addition sign right this is making it like that plus one locks that x in like it cannot get canceled cannot all right perform the indicated operation and simplify so here we're multiplying so when you're multiplying two fractions um this is ideal right because then you can just treat you can treat it as one big fraction, right? And everything's being multiplied top and bottom. So that means anything that's on the top can cancel with its matching counterpart in the bottom, right? There's X on top and X on bottom, the X is canceled, right? Everything's like a one for one kind of deal. So what I'm saying is, if, if you want, we could expand this out, but the way I would do it, right, there's X cubed, there's three X's in the bottom. So I need to take away three X's from the top. So here's two, and then there's two more. So this is gonna go away. So leaving just one X in the numerator. Moving to the Y's, there are three Y's up top and three Y's in the denominator. So all the Y's are gonna go away. <clears throat> All right, five goes into five once, five goes into 36 times. Six goes into six once, six goes into 12 twice. Two goes into two once, two goes into four two times. So what's left behind? There's an X here, and then a two in the denominator. Everything else has a line through it. So two over X. All right, four. Four is a division problem. So division problem is basically like the multiplication problem. The only difference is we have to flip the second term and then treat it like the first, the, the previous problem. So you flip it, treat it like multiplication and then cancel. So this is going to be 
14 y cubed over 6 x y squared. All right, and it's no longer multiple is no longer division, it's multiplication. So then we start canceling things out. So there's a 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into 14 twice. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 three times. And then that's it for the numbers. So in the denominator, we have 1, 2x's. So those are going to cancel. 2x's. And there's 3x's up top, so there's going to be 1x left over. Remember the denominator? We have 4y's, right? 2 and 2, 4 y's and three y's in the numerator. So the three y's are gonna go away, two y's there, and then one y here. So then left over, we have two x up top. You gotta be able to like kind of see through the clutter. And then in the denominator, we have a y and a three. And that's as far as it can go. All right, find the least common multiple. So the smallest common multiple. So what's the smallest thing that multiplies into both of these? Um, X squared plus 9 is the difference of cubes. So that's X plus 3, X minus 3. Right, these two things multiplied together make X squared minus 9. So then when you look at the other one, x squared plus 4x plus 3, what two things multiply to make this? So it's two numbers that multiply to make 3 that add up to 4, which is 3 and 1. So they're both positive. All right. So the least common multiple, the only common multiple, is x plus 3. Right? That's common to both. X plus three. All right, number six, same thing. So X squared minus four X, I'm gonna factor out an X. So what's left behind? X minus four, X squared, no, no, no. X minus four. And right hand side, I'm gonna factor out an X. And x squared minus 8x plus 16. All right, so let's think about that. Two numbers that multiply to make 16 that add up to 8. 1 and 16, 2 and 8, 4 and 4. 4 and 4. So Right, so it's positive 16, negative 8, so they both have to be negative. Okay, so the least common multiple. Hmm. I, this is kind of interesting. Because <coughs> what's common to both? X minus four, X and X minus four. All right, X, X goes into both and X minus four goes into both. So in terms of value wise, right? I could argue that X minus four is gonna be the least, like the smallest. Right, like if x was two, well then x minus four would be negative two. Um, or in, in terms of like like size wise, like multiple things, is it just x? That's that's an interesting question. I'm gonna go with x minus four. Well, only because that is. 
that's definitely less than x right x minus four is less than x there's no there's no arguing that okay or right, perform the indicated operation and then simplify. So the operation is going to be subtraction. So we're going to subtract four over three X from seven over five X. And to do that, we're going to need a common denominator. So in both terms, right? In both denominators, there is already an X. So what does the other denominator have that the other one does not? So what does one denominator have that the other one doesn't? Right, so on the right-hand side, it needs a five. And on the left-hand side, this needs a three. Right, I, now, I don't want to use five X. Right. Could I use 5x? Sure, I could. Right. Like technically I could use whatever I want. But it's best to note or to notice right away that both denominators already have x. So I don't want to introduce more x's, right? The more x's I have, like the worse off I'm going to be. Uh -huh. Um, so <clears throat> you just use whatever the other denominator doesn't have. So now with that being said, you multiply straight across. So this is going to be 21 over 15x. 4 times 5 is 20 over 15x. So right away, 15x, that's the denominator that's in my answer. I'm not combining them. I'm not doing anything to them. That's like it is what it is, right? And then 21 minus 20 is just 1. And that's as far as we can go. That's as simple as it gets. All right. All right, number eight. Uh, same idea. We're adding. So first thing I want to do is simplify as much as I can, meaning factor as much as I can. So... On the left hand side, this is going to be x plus 1, x minus 1, right? It's a difference of squares. You always got to be able to see that. On the right hand side, two numbers that multiply to make 4 that add up to 5, 4 and 1. And they're both positive. All right, x plus 4, x plus 1. All right, so those are the denominators. Numerators can't, um, I can't factor or simplify any more up top. Okay, I'm gonna have to multiply each side by something. All right. We look at the denominators and we see, okay, what does one denominator have that the other one does not? Well, they both have x plus one, so that's good. This side has an x minus one, therefore the right-hand side needs x minus one. So now that they both have x minus one in the denominator. The right-hand side has x plus four, therefore we need x plus four on the left, top and bottom. All right, so this means that x plus 4, x plus 1, x minus 1 is our denominator. Okay, the numerator is going to be x plus 4 times 2x and the 2x can distribute so that's going to be 2x squared plus 8x
on the right hand side, 2x minus 3, x minus 1. So distributing here, we're going to get 3x, 2x squared minus 2x minus 3x plus 3. So that's 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. That's on the right-hand side. All right, combining it all together. The denominator is going to be exactly what it is. x plus 4, x minus 1, x plus 1. Doesn't matter the order because it's being multiplied. Combining the top. So 2x squared plus 2x squared is 4x squared. 8x minus 5x is plus 3x and then plus 3. So I'm thinking, I'm trying to do some mental math. Will this factor? So 4 times 3 is 12. So two numbers that make 12, multiply to make 12, that add up to 3. 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Nope. That's it. <clears throat> Double checking real quick. Okay. All right, number 10. Solve the equation by cross multiplying. Okay, so here we're kind of forced into a, a technique, but that's okay. I ain't scared. So we're going to multiply here and multiply here. So let's do this one first. X plus 4, 3x plus 1. This is going to be. 3x squared plus x plus 12x plus 4. Well, that's the left side. Right side, 3x plus 5, 2x minus 1. So this is going to equal 6x squared minus 3x plus 10x minus 5. Combining like terms, 3x squared plus 13x plus 4, 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. Okay, we have two quadratics that are equal to each other. I'm going to move everything one way, set it equal to 0, and then hopefully factor. So minus 3x squared minus 13x minus four so this whole side is zero right because i took it all away this is going to be 3x squared minus 6x minus nine so notice three six nine there's a three that i can divide a three out of or there's a three i can divide three out of everything is what i'm trying to say so that means Zero is equal to x squared minus 2x minus 3. And now this can be factored. Two numbers that multiply to make 3 that add up to 2. 3 and 1. So x minus 3. Uh, 3 and 1, right. x minus 3 and x plus 1. So that means x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. So then we look and see if we plug those either one of those values into the original, will we get 0 in the denominator? 9 plus 5, 9 plus 1. No, 3 is good. Negative 3 plus 5, negative 3 plus 1. So we're still good. So both of these answers are correct.
All right, 11. So cross multiply, that's what they want. All right, I can do that. So let's see. This is going to be 3x squared plus 3. Right hand side is going to be 3x plus 6 minus 3x squared minus 6x. All right, combining like terms, we're going to get in descending order. All right, combining 3x and negative 6x. Right left hand side. All right, I'm going to move it, some things around. So this is going to be minus 3x squared. Mm, I'm going to go the other direction just to keep it positive. So plus 3x minus 6 minus 6. So we're going to get... I'm writing in descending order. 6x squared plus 3x minus 3 equals 0. All right. 6, 3, 3. I can divide a 3 up. 2x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0. Right. All I did was divide 3 by everything. <coughs> or everything divided by three. All right, so then, we can, so write a little slide and divide method. Two numbers that multiply to make two that add up to one. This will be two and one. Right, positive two, negative one. So then that means X is equal to negative two, X is equal to one. Going back to the original, when we plug into the denominator, negative two, okay, that's not gonna make a zero. The one, however, will. So one is no good. So negative two is our only answer. Negative two is our only answer. <clears throat> mm. All right. All right, solve equation by using the lowest common denominator. All right, this one's my this one's my favorite method. So the idea is that if I can get matching denominators everywhere, then I can cancel out the denominators and then all the numerators will equal each other. So I'm going to start with just the left hand side, right? Just these two terms. And then we'll handle the right hand side in a minute. Now, is there a way you could do all three at the same time? Yeah, you can, but you'll like, it's like having a lot of irons in the fire. Like you want to just handle a couple of things at once, as opposed to handling a bunch of things at once. Okay, so getting a common denominator, what? That's going to be 2 over 2. So then this is going to be, this is going to be, All 
All right, combining these two, the denominator is two. Numerator is gonna be, so x plus four x is five x plus three. This is the left-hand side, five x plus three over two. All right, this is gonna equal the right-hand side, six x plus one or four minus x. All right, I have to multiply both sides because right, we're trying to get a common denominator. So we look at the other denominator. So two and then four minus x, top and bottom. All right, so check it out. We have the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So both denominators have the exact same thing. So in a sense, I no longer care about the denominators. So we set the numerators equal to each other. The numerators are gonna be four minus x, five x plus three is equal to six x plus one times two. All right, right-hand side is way easier. You just distribute the two. 12x plus 2. Left hand side, 20x plus 12x minus 5x squared minus 3x. Are right, combining like terms and writing in descending order. Negative 5x squared. Mm. So, all right, so there should be no x around. Four times three is just 12. All right, and then plus 17x. Plus 12 equals 12x plus 2. All right, moving everything to the left. This is going to be negative 5x squared plus 5x plus 10 is equal to 0. All right, that's nice because 5 can be divided out of everything. As a matter of fact, negative 5 can be divided out of everything. So this is going to be x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Right, because I divided everything by negative 5. So two numbers that multiply to make 2 that add up to 1. So this is going to be have room. No, I don't. All right, it's going to be 2 and 1, right? Because 2 times 2 is 2, and 2 and a 1 can essentially make a, a 1. So this is going to be negative 2 plus 1, right? Because negative 2 and then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So this, this means x is equal to 2, x is equal to negative 1. 2 and negative 1, those are my potential answers. We have to go all the way back to the beginning and look at the original. So the only x in the denominator is here. So 2 will make that not 0, basically. And negative 1 will also make it not 0. So that means these are my answers, 2 and negative 1. All right. Let's try it again. So... x plus 5 over 2x plus 3, nothing can cancel out or nothing can simplify, plus x plus 1 over negative 2x. Again, nothing can simplify, nothing can cancel out. So I got to multiply both sides by 
whatever the other denominator has that the one denominator doesn't have. So you may say, well, they both have twos, right? But that's not necessarily true because one side is 2x plus 3 and the other side is just 2x. So I can't consider that both sides have a 2. And also I cannot just add 3 to one side. Like you can't add anything. You have to multiply. That's the only stipulation. You have to multiply. So here we have no choice. 2x plus 3 top and bottom, right? It's just whatever the other side has. So negative 2x, negative 2x. All right, this is going to combine to make, let's see, this is going to distribute. So negative 2x squared minus 10x over negative 2x, 2x plus 3. This is going to be x plus 1, 2x plus 3 over negative 2x, 2x plus 3. Okay. The one denominator, negative 2x, 2x plus 3. Our numerator, we have to distribute on the right hand side. So this is going to be 2x squared plus 3x plus 2x plus 3, which is basically 5x in the middle. And so that's essentially 5x. All right, so now. Combining these, so negative 2x squared on the left plus positive 2x, that's actually going to cancel. Negative 10x on the left plus 5x on the right gives me negative 5x. And then plus 3. Okay, there is nothing that we can simplify. All right. This is going to be equal to 1. This is actually really nice. Negative 1. Negative 1. <clears throat> All right, so I'm thinking. Right, I'm thinking. So, right, in general, 1 written as a fraction is anything over itself. Right? So I can have the same thing on top, same thing on bottom. As long as they match, it's going to equal one. But I want negative one. So one of them needs to be negative. So that means if I let, so what I'm saying is, so negative five X plus three, over negative 2x, 2x plus 3, right? Instincts are kind of telling me to just factor out a negative right now and cancel out the negative in the bottom. But that doesn't change the fact that this is negative 1 on the right. So what this is saying is if I do negative 2x, 2x plus 3 over positive 2x, 2x plus 3, right? This is essentially negative 1. It doesn't matter where the negative is, whether the negative is on top or negative is on bottom. The beauty is that it's on the bottom and that both denominators match. So that means that I don't care about that any longer. So now just the numerators equal each other. So I can distribute this, and this is going to be... 4x squared plus 6x. So now that's going to equal
negative 5x plus 3, basically. So I can just write it over here. Negative 5x plus 3. Right? Because they equal each other. All right, I'm going to add 5x to both sides. Minus 3, minus 3. So I'm going to get 4x squared plus 11x minus 3 is equal to 0. So a little cross multiply and divide. This is going to be negative 12. So two numbers that make negative 12 that add up to positive 11. It's 12 and 1. So plus minus. No. 12 and 1. So plus 12 minus 1. So this means x equals negative 12 or x is equal to positive 1. So we go back to the original, like the OG equation, and we look at negative 12 and 1. So negative 12 here is going to work. Negative 12 here is going to work. So negative 12 is definitely going to work. Positive 1. So if I plug in a 1, we're good. Plug in a 1, we're good. So both of these answers are legit. Okay. Number 14, simplify the rational expression if possible. So we're just simplifying. Okay. This is a difference of square, a difference of cubes, right? This can be rewritten as three cubed. Got to be able to see it. Three times three times three is 27. So a difference of cube states. Right, I have a difference, which means subtraction, of cubes, a cubed and b, and b cubed. This can be rewritten as, so the way I, I remember it, because it's minus, it's going to be minus plus plus. That's what I tell myself. Minus plus plus. So then a minus b a squared, a b, b squared. So when it's minus, it's minus plus plus. Now, if it's plus, right, sum of cubes, then it's going to start with plus and then minus plus. So in this case, it's minus. So that means the numerator is going to be x minus 3 x squared plus 3x plus 3 squared, which is 9. All right, and then two numbers that multiply that make 9 that add up to 3. Uh, nothing nice, right? So nothing. And then x minus 3 is in the denominator. So look, cancel, cancel. So we are left with x squared plus 3x plus 9. And then that can't be, that can't be factored into clean whole numbers. Right, you could use quadratic formula for sure. It's probably going to be a complex number perhaps. Either way, the point is it can't be factored cleanly, so I'm not worried about it. All right, 15. Okay. Let's look at the denominator first. That's the easier of the two. Two numbers that multiply to make seven that add up to a six. Seven and one can multiply to make seven. Seven and one can also add or subtract to make a six. So one's negative. Right, negative seven plus one is negative six. Negative seven times one is negative seven. All right, so that's the denominator. We're good there. All right, numerator comes from work. Factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. That's how do I know factor by grouping? Because one, two, three, four terms, and they're all in descending order. 
x cubed, x squared, x, no x. So x cubed minus 3x squared minus 25x minus 21. All right, so the idea is I split this down the middle in front of, in front of the second operation. Right, in this case, it's minus 25. So looking at just the first two terms, x cubed minus 3x squared, factor out the GCF, what's common to both? x squared. What's left behind? X minus three. So for this to work properly, I'm gonna do the same thing to the last two, the latter two. And I want X minus three to show up, right? I want that to happen. If it doesn't happen, then it's not factorable. So I'm keeping that in mind that I want, I'm not gonna just blindly write X three because what if it doesn't factor? But I want X minus three to show up. So look at what is common to both terms 25 and 21 is there any, even anything that's possible that's crazy there's nothing possible like what goes into 25 also goes into 21 um if i, if I take out a negative one that does me no good because then what's left behind 25x positive 25x positive 21 can't take out a three can't take out a five. Wow. Is that? Okay, so look, this is prime example. Like maybe it's a typo, but let's just roll with it. So we can't, right? Like I can't factor the numerator anymore because X minus three didn't show up. So, so it can't be factored. Let's go with that. So this is gonna be the numerator over x minus seven, x plus one. Simplify the rational expression. All right, well, we simplified it. Man, if for some reason, if for some reason, no, I couldn't even figure out a way to make it work. Like, what if we could correct it? What if we could correct it? I would need this to be a seven. Right, that would have to be a seven because then this would make a seven here. So if that's a seven, then the first part would work. So now I would need X minus seven to be here. So that means I would have to take out a three, a positive three. Then that means this would have to be a three, a positive three. No, but I want X plus X minus one to come out. X minus one is a good thing so that. So let's see. I can make this work. So if I take out a seven, make that a plus. Okay, so let's suppose that this was, this was the case, right? I think this is a better example. Than, than the given one. So, so first off, let's just, the problem is already over. Like I've already solved it. It can't be factored. That's, that's what it comes down to. Now I'm modifying it so I can demonstrate w what it would look like. Minus X plus seven. So the idea is that when you factor, when, when you look at it, you're like, okay, well, I can't factor anything out. Well, if this is negative, always factor out a negative. So when you factor out a negative one, what's left behind? X minus seven. And then this means, this means that X minus seven matches. So 
x minus 7. And then you write down the other pieces, x squared minus 1. Remember, and, right, and now this is the new numerator. Well, x, minus one, x squared minus 1 is really x plus 1, x minus 1. And then, of course, x minus 7. And this is all over x minus 7, x plus 1. And then when you simplify, cancel, cancel, and then x minus 1 is just there. So that's, that's if you change the problem around, right? But if you don't, then you can't factor it because the top was uh, unfactorable. All right, 16. We're about halfway through. More than halfway through, actually. So perform the indicated operation and simplify. Again, this is division. So I'm going to flip the second one. So 9x cubed, y squared, over 16x to the fourth. All right, so... This is now multiplication, and we don't care about that anymore. All right, we don't care about this. All right, looking at the numbers and numbers only, 3 goes into 9 three times. 4 goes into 16 four times. All right, how many x's do I have on top? I have 5 x's on top. Right, 2 and 3 make 5. So how many x's do I have on bottom? 4. So I'm going to cancel out all four of these, take away that three, and take away one, leaving behind just an x. All right, how many y's are on bottom? Two. How many y's are on top? Three. So that y squared, that y squared. So what's left behind? We have an x and a three. So three x. Denominator, what do we have? We have just a four, so four. Those are fun, for sure those are fun. Okay. All right, number 17, same thing. It's multiplication, so I'm gonna factor everything. So top left, two numbers that multiply to make three that add up to two, three and one. So negative 3 plus 1. Bottom left, I can factor out a 2, leaving behind x minus 2. Top right, two numbers that multiply to make 10 that add up to a 3. It's 5 and 2. 5 and 2. It's negative, so one of them has to be negative, the small one. Right, because it's positive 3. 5 minus 2 is positive 3. And then bottom right, two numbers are multiplied to make 5 that add up to 6. 5 and 1. So they're both positive because everything is positive. All right, so now we've got everything factored, everything simplified. What's on top that's also in the bottom? x plus 5, x plus 5, x minus 2, x minus 2, x plus 1, x plus 1. So what's left over? Numerator, top, x minus 3. Denominator, bottom, over 2. Let's go. 18. We need to get a common denominator and subtract. So I need to multiply both sides by, what, by whatever the other denominator has that the one denominator does not. So for instance, number wise, this side needs a three, this side needs a two. They both have X's. However, the right hand side has two X squared. So that means the left hand side needs an X. So they both have an X squared essentially. They both have a two, they both have a three. All right, so now, that I got a common denominator, the top is going to be matching the denominator. Okay. 8x minus 3 over 3 times 2 is 6. 
x squared. All right. That was a good one. 19. Same thing. Common denominator first, and then we add them. So looking at the denominator on the bottom left, it's a difference of squares, x plus three, x minus three. Right-hand side, two numbers are multiplied to make six that add up to five. That's two and three. Okay. Common denominator, right? So what does, let's see. So both denominators have an x plus 3, x plus 3. That's good. What's next? x plus 2, so that means this side needs an x plus 2. x minus 3. This side needs an x minus 3. Okay. Combining them, we're going to get... So denominator is going to be x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3. Distributing, this is going to be 4x squared plus 8x. Now, you may be wondering, like, in the previous problem where I canceled out the denominator, right, because they match. That's because they were equal to each other. Here... We're adding them. They're not equal to each other, so you can't just cancel out the denominator. Right-hand side, so this is going to be 3x minus 1 times x minus 3. Distributing, 3x squared minus 9x minus 1x plus 3. Combining like terms, we're going to get 3x squared minus 10x plus 3 all over the denominator, x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3. All right, adding these together, we're going to get one denominator, which is what we have, x plus 2, x plus 3, x minus 3. Combining or adding the numerators. Combine like terms, 4x squared plus 3x squared, 7x squared. 8x minus 10x minus 2x, and then plus 3. So let's think real quick. Could we factor the top? That's the question. So 7 times negative 3 is negative 21. Negative 21. Multiples of negative 21 that add up to negative 2. So 1 and 21, 3 and 7. 3 and 7 don't make a 2. So I'm good there. Like we're that's as much as you can do. Like basically we can't do it anymore. We can't uh simplify any further. Cleanly that is. <clears throat> All right, number 20. Simplify the complex fraction. All right, so there's a couple of different ways of doing this. My first thought is if I can make one fraction on top and one fraction on bottom, right? If I can turn this into a one single fraction, if I can turn this into one single fraction, then I can keep the top fraction, change the multiplication, flip the bottom fraction. That's, that's my idea. Is there another way? Probably. But this is how I'm doing it. All right, so... 2x minus 1, this is 2 over x minus 1, so this will be x over x, which means 2 minus x over x, that's the numerator. Then 3 plus x over 2, common denominator, 2 over 2, which is going to be 6 plus x over 2. So what does that mean? What that mean? That means I have 2 minus x over x over 
six plus x over two. So now I have one fraction on top and one fraction in the denominator. I'm gonna keep the fraction on top, flip the bottom one and make it a multiplication, right? So two over six plus x. Then I see if I can multiply or not multiply, if I can simplify or cancel anything. Doesn't look like it. So this is gonna be, come on bro. This is gonna be two, two minus X over X, six plus X. Now you may say, okay, well, it, do you factor it or do you distribute it, put it back together or leave it like this on AP exams? you want to leave everything factored typically. So get in the habit of leaving things factored. Okay, we're almost done. Cross multiply. Okay, starting here. Five times three is 15 X. Five times negative one is negative five equals the other side. This is gonna be eight X plus 16. Moving everything to one side or actually solving for X, right? Cause it's just a single variable. So 15 minus X, seven X. Add five, add five. So seven X is equal to 21 divide both sides by seven X is equal to three. So we check and see will three make a zero in here. Nine minus one, six plus four. So no, three is good. Three is good. Okay. Cross multiply. Let's go this way. 4x squared minus 20 is equal to, we'll go this way. All right, so let's think about this. x plus 3, x minus 2. We have to distribute. So x squared minus 2x plus 3x minus 6. So this is going to make x squared plus X minus six X squared plus X minus six minus X squared minus X plus six all right so we have three X squared minus X minus 14 equals zero. All right, so what's 14 times three? Uh, 30, 40, 42, 42. X squared minus X minus 42 and two numbers that multiply to make 42 that add up to one. So two numbers that are side, like consecutive six and seven. So X six, seven. So seven's negative. Six is positive. So X plus six, X minus seven equals zero. This means that because we did this whole slide and divide method, right? Slide, divide, time to divide. So we have to divide both sides by the number that we multiplied by. So this is gonna be X plus two, right? Cause that simplifies. And this is gonna be X minus seven thirds equals zero. So my two answers 
Where do I want to write it? X is equal to two. X is equal to positive seven. X is equal to negative two. X is equal to positive seven thirds. So we look and see if either one of these will make a zero. Mm, no, it does not. It almost looks like it would right here, but our X is negative two, not positive. Let's double check our work. Negative seven, positive six makes negative one. So yeah, what it is, what it is. All right, 23, lowest common denominator. See if you can remember how to do this one. So working just the right hand side. I'm going to multiply both sides so that the denominators match. So one thing I notice is that a two can factor out up top, right? You always want to simplify if possible. And that that's beneficial for us because this two and the 16 cancels to make eight. That's going to keep the number small. If, cause if you do, say you didn't notice that, well, then your numbers are going to be big. You have to multiply 16 times something. So you always want to make life easy, right? So that means right hand side needs an X, right? Because this side has an X. Left hand side is going to need a four because four times two makes an eight. So this means 12 over 8x plus this is going to be over 8x for sure. Distributing x squared plus x. So we're going to get 8x for the denominator and then x squared plus x plus 12. That's crazy. Okay, this is going to be equal to, so look, x plus 1 over 5 is equal to, this can actually factor, right? I don't know if factoring is the way, no, factor is not going to be the way. Leave it, leave it together, leave it together. So x squared plus x plus 12 over 8x. All right, so same idea. This left-hand side needs an X top and bottom, right? Because this side has an X. This side also needs an eight. And then right-hand side needs a five. Okay, so the denominator, eight times X times five, right? And it equals, right? They equal each other, we have equality. So that means I don't care about the denominators when they're equal. So putting it all together, we're gonna have, so distributing, this is gonna be eight X squared plus eight X equals distributing the five. Five X squared plus five X, five times 12 is 60. All right, I'm going to subtract everything from the right. I'm going to move it left. So this means minus 5x squared, minus 5x, minus 60. So this is going to be 8 minus 5, which is 3x squared. 8 minus 5 is going to be positive 3x. And then minus 60 equals 0. All right, right away, I notice that they're all divisible by 3. So x squared plus x minus 20 is equal to zero. All right, what two numbers that are consecutive multiply to make 20 that add up to 20? All right, consecutive because they need to be, or they add up to one. Consecutive because it needs to be one, right? So it's gonna be four and five. 
right? Negative. Which one's negative? The big one or the small one's negative. Four times five times negative four is negative twenty. Five minus four is positive one. That's what we needed. So this means that x is equal to negative five and also x is equal to positive four. Again, looking at the original OG denominator, it's just two x. So no matter what I plug in, it won't be zero. So both of these are correct. Okay, great, we have four terms. Let's go. So I wonder, are we slick enough? Are we nice enough yet to not rewrite this thing? In this particular problem, check it out. So everything's gonna need a three. Right, because this is really over one. Right, everything needs a three. Everything also needs an X. That already has one. Okay, so combining, combining the left hand side of the equal sign, right? This is going to be distributed. We have x squared plus 4x minus 2 times 3, which is 6. And that's going to be over 3x. This is equal to right hand side. So x times 3 times x, that's 3x squared minus 3x all over 3x. So notice here. The denominators match so I can just cancel it out I can cancel out the denominators in a sense but man instincts are telling me that if I can factor out a 3x from the numerator if I factor out a 3x from the numerator I'll be able to cancel out 3x look what I'm saying is I'll do it both ways but look if I factor out a 3x I'm gonna get 3x and what's left behind x minus 1. This is actually very nice because this 3x and this 3x will cancel and we can cross multiply and divide. Oh, but look. Lowest common denominator. Okay, so they don't want us to do that. Oh, boo. But that would have been nice though. That would have been that would have been clutch. So look, we don't care about these and now the numerators are equal to one another. So this is going to be x squared plus 4x minus 6 is equal to 3x squared minus 3x. Move everything left. This is going to be negative 2x squared plus 7x minus 6 is equal to 0. Then. If I divide everything, right? Because this, this A term is negative. I don't like that personally. So I can just flip the signs. Like I can divide everything by negative one and that's just gonna flip the signs. Does that make it better? A little bit. Then if I do the slide and divide method, that's gonna mean X squared minus seven X plus 12. And now two numbers that multiply to make 12 that add up to a seven, three and four all day, three and four. So that means they're both negative. So that means X is equal to three, X is equal to four. That's not what that means. The slide and divide method, we have to divide both sides by, we have to divide that two back out. All right, so x is equal to positive 3 halves or x is equal to positive 2. We go back to the original problem and see if any one of those numbers will make the denominator 0. 
which is right here. Well, not. So both these answers are legit. Okay. The last problem. The last problem. A group of friends decide to rent a boat on Canyon Lake for spring break. The price for the rental is $1,000 for the week. So $1,000 is what they got to pay for seven days. Write an equation that represents the price per person in terms of the number of people X and the cost per person. Okay, so Y is going to equal the cost per person. X is the number of people. So if they're paying $1,000... They just divide the price by the number of people, and this will tell me how much each person is paying, right? If, I, if, if only one person goes, then he's paying $1,000 by himself. If two people go, they're each paying $500. So that's basically how that is saying. So at the last minute, another two people decide to go to, to the lake. Okay, so poor planning. And the price for each student drops by $25. Okay, so how many people are using the boat at the lake now? All right, so one way we could do this, if we do, let's just build a chart, bro. How many would I need? So if this is X and this is Y, right? If one person goes, each person's paying a thousand. Two people go, they're each paying 500. It just went down by 500. So that decrease, we want to see it drop by 25. That's what we want to see. So three, this would be like what? 333 and 33 cents. Four, 250. So we're getting close. Wow. Come on, iPad. So by five, this is going to be 200. So look, it just dropped by 50, so we're getting close. Six. All right, six goes into 10 once. 40. Six repeating. Right? 40, 6, 36, 4, repeating. So, seven, this is an ugly one too. So seven goes into 10 once, 30, or 300 rather, four, make 28, two, 142 and some change. Eight. Eight goes into 10 once. 20. Twice will make 16. And then five, so 125 each. Is that 25 people yet? Or $25? Nine. Nine goes into 10 once. I guess that'd be one repeating. So now it's, it's dropping less. So then if 10 people go, it'd be 100. All right, so there was never, and the price for each student drops by $25. Okay, well, where did it drop by $25? Here it dropped 500. Here it dropped like one and some chain, like 100 and something. 75. This was close as 50. There was 30. Or maybe there, 166 minus 42, is that close to 25? Is 142 even correct? There's a lot of mental math that happened. 
24. So we can call that. Right, if six people go, it was 166. And if seven people go, it's now 142 a person, which is $24 less, which is essentially $25, right? You could round that up. So seven, seven is what I'm going to go with. Whether that's correct or not, that's what I'm going to go with. Right, I can justify that answer. All right. Good luck, as always. Peace.